Hi, my name is Lizzie Carr and I am with Bozeg and Company. We are a bootstrap startup located in San Francisco and Austin, Texas, and we're super excited to be sponsors of the GONG conference this year. We have so many internal conversations about what it means to be a data provider in 2020, what are the types of organizations that we think are meaningful, and how do we handle data ethically. And so we're excited to be part of the conversation, and we are excited to get your feedback. So again, we are Baze and Company, and we have a new product called Field Data. And we provide on-demand access to location data with global coverage. This is our team, and we're clearly a diverse bunch. We really care about having a multitude of perspectives in the room and also about asking the challenging questions. Here is Sammy Simwangu, our CEO, who's here with me today. Jason Haas is our CTO, and then Jacob Gray is our newest addition, and we'll be adding more members to the team as we move into 2021. So as we're looking at what's changed in the world in 2020, obviously COVID-19 has massively derailed our lives and our systems. And one of the most concerning impacts is that COVID is exacerbating inequities, and this is happening in a range of ways, but particularly on the data front. The 2030 deadline for the SDGs is already very ambitious, and now COVID-19 has shut down data operations and statistical operations worldwide. It's become very difficult to access information about what different populations need, and we are left with very little idea of how we're progressing toward the 2030 goals. As we know, the objective of no person or community left behind necessitates that we have correct, up-to-date information on populations, their resources, and their needs. We need to invest in data and statistics to maintain coverage of all population groups and to guarantee the quality and consistency of that data. Here are a few of the impacts that we're seeing of the pandemic on national statistical offices. So we're seeing 65% of headquarters are partially or fully closed. 90% have told their staff to work from home and 96% have partially or fully stopped face-to-face -face data collection. As far as impacts on data production and reporting, in Sub-Saharan Africa, 97% of countries are reporting that the production of regular statistics is affected. And in Latin America and the Caribbean, 88% are having difficulty meeting international data reporting requirements. So what we're seeing as a result of this is that we need to think of new ways to collect data and we need to think of new ways to analyze it. We've identified a couple of organizations that are stepping up as leaders in this effort and we believe are providing a strong example of how to move forward. The UNICEF Office of Innovation is supporting epidemic intelligence efforts with the World Health Organization as part of a network. They are using near real-time mobility data to study the effects of social distancing in Colombia, Cote d'Ivoire, and in a number of other countries. The second leader that we're seeing is the United Nations Global Pulse. The UN Pulse Lab in Jakarta is creating models to show population displacement and they're assessing changes in the behavior of people who are impacted by natural disasters. They're gathering actionable insights that they can share with policymakers and they're doing that also through the use of mobile network data. So we're living in this new world where data reporting has become very difficult, and yet we see these two organizations who are continuing to thrive amid the challenges. So what are they doing that is enabling them to thrive? The common thread that we see is that they're using commercially available geospatial data. When we combine this data with the SDG indicators, we gain insight into communities and it really helps us understand and respond to local circumstances and needs. The promised land at Baze, we can envision a future in which big data is harnessed as safely and responsibly as possible in service of the public good. The net effect being that we find new and faster methods of analysis, we get insights into the needs of vulnerable populations, and we understand where it's most important to invest resources in an emergency. So that brings me to the part that I'm really excited to share with you, and that is Baze field data which provides insight into movement over time. We have really dense global data that's updated every day, and we're using this to build a model that shows anonymized insights into human behavior that can complement on-the-ground operations. 
This data is anonymized using six digit geohashes or about one square kilometer blocks. And it has the power to facilitate economic development, disaster recovery, and disease forecasting projects. Base field data is created using our underlying data schema, which you can see here. Our schema is fast and accurate. It updates within 24 hours of the event, and all data is within 50 meters of accuracy. There are a few things that differentiate us. We value data privacy, hence the anonymized data. And additionally, we are building a rock solid security infrastructure to protect that data. We have dense coverage and we consolidate SDK location data vendors into one queryable data set that we update daily. And finally, we have flexible purchasing. We understand that especially for small organizations, it's not always feasible to invest in a large data set. And so our customers can purchase as much or as little data as they need. Here is a quick peek at our coverage based on the number of records over 90 days. And this is exciting. Currently, we are engaged in a collaboration with the UNICEF Office of Innovation. And that includes two pilots, one to study the spread of Ebola in Africa and one to study the spread of COVID-19 in South America. And finally, this is a picture of our field's data. So what you see here are the number of visits to a geohash during a month, the number of unique visitors during that time, we can also map visitors to the geohashes where they live and work. And feel free to pause the video and spend a little more time seeing what other, other information is here. Thank you so much for watching this talk. We would really love to hear your thoughts and your feedback and how we can be of service to your organization. Sammy and I will be available in the chat and we are also available for questions and sales inquiries. Uh, you can reach out to Sam, Jason, or Lizzie at baze.io. And we hope you have a fantastic week.